Hey, Joe. How are you? I um, wanted to just ask about Keon's game yesterday. What did you see out of him, um, whether it was live or watching it back, just what stood out? Um, look, I thought, um, you know, you're seeing, you're seeing a guy that's continuing to uh, get more and more comfortable, I guess. Um, you know, it's, it's hard as a rookie, right? You get a, get a feel of how people are going to play you, techniques, the speed of the game, and I'm um, just pleased with how he's continuing to progress, you know, put a little more on him this past week in terms of moving him around or lining up in different spots, and he handled it well. And um, making it important, you know, pointing out last week, you know, you catch him, you see him catch the one-step slant and seeing all of our offensive linemen kind of chasing down the field for him, you know, and just pointing that out to him and then seeing him, you know, um, you know, it was important to him in the run game yesterday. And I always think as an offense, right, it's – you can tell how your offense is playing by how your receivers are blocking and um, – you know, it was important to him yesterday. So i um, pleased with how he played, um, have to continue to get better. When you see his physicality and also sometimes he'll show his personality with that too in the same play, what does that mean to see kind of him just showing that? Yeah, I mean, that's 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 what we want. We tell everybody be with us and I want everybody to play to their personality. If you're quiet, you can be quiet. If you're coop and you're quiet and that's your personality, I'm good. If, if you got to be loud, but as long as you're doing it with us, you know, you're towing the line, but we're not getting penalties. We're not doing things that, you know, outside of, you know, what we expect. But, um, you know, I want guys to play to their personality. I think that that's uh, when we all do that together as 11, you know, it's it's fun to watch. And then separately, I was talking to some guys on the O-line after the game yesterday, and they were saying how James Cook does such a good job communicating what he's seeing during a game. And that opens up things for them to make plays. What do you see from James on that front? I know you're obviously not right on the field with him, but just like his communication and his kind of adapting within a game. Yeah. yeah and I think that's the maturation of, of any running back, but um, seeing James, you know, uh, just seeing his comfort level and his understanding of schemes. Um, and I, I know it, it sounds so, you know, elementary of, Hey, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a ball handler. I get the ball and, you know, we're running the ball left and I just have to find the open gap and, you know, I think, you know, growing up in high school, even to college, like I think that's there's a lot to that. Um, but just him understanding how, you know, different front structures and techniques and the way the offensive linemen are are kind of treating it and how he can press a block to help it. And um, just the communication that he has throughout the week with our offensive line, you know, and then seeing that to carry over to game day and their confidence in him and their his confidence in them and just them getting on the same page is we might have a run that goes for two yards in the first half that, is going to eventually be able to, you know, or be able to kind of spring one later because their communication with it. And, um, you know, uh, Jimbo's, a, he's a quiet guy by nature, but just seeing him get more and more comfortable with the scheme and the system and the understanding of um, of all of that, um, it's important to him. And it's, it's fun to watch when he's, when he's playing at a high level. Thanks, Joe. Coach Brady, Mookie Arkins, Wefo Sports, 1080. Good win yesterday. Thank you. Um. Keeping teams off balance with balance. What goes into that? Keeping teams off balance with balance. Um, I think there's, uh, you know, uh, depending on how you're taking that wording, I think there's a lot that can potentially go with it. Sometimes you can um, you can try to outthink yourselves with that, or you can, um, I think there's a fine line with understanding who you are as an offense and what you want to be, but also being able to attack the weaknesses and the, you know, the, uh, of the defense and, I think you always weigh the fine line of that as you kind of go of, hey, this might be a weakness of theirs, but is this a strength of ours? And, you know, run past tendencies, personnel tendencies, you kind of go back and forth with. It. And sometimes you have a plan of going into it in the game and it might get skewed. It might go a different direction with how the game flows going. But um, you, you try not to be predictable in certain instances where it's like, hey, you know what? We know we're running it. They know we're running it. And we still got to be able to run the ball. So there's that fine line with it. But uh, um, as much as you can kind of try to stay – you know, balanced, but uh, keep the defense you knowing on their heels, uh, the better. Absolutely. And uh, I, I, I chimed in with Brady and Josh yesterday, and he, he spoke on playing on time and within the structure and the offense. What, what, what goes in that in your eyes? Uh, it's just more of, um, you know, uh, Josh does such an elite job of playing off schedule. Um, but if we can, uh, it, you know, just seeing him continue to evolve of, you know, just, hey, if, if that five-yard completion is there, if that, you know, three yard flat routes there. And it's within the, it's within the context of the system. If it's there, Hey, take it until they take it away and move on and progress. Um, you know, I think that that's, that leads to efficiency in us being able to move the football at a, at a, at a high level. And, 
you know, there was instances yesterday where he just, you know, got the ball out and got the speed and space and you know, allow your playmakers to kind of do a lot with it and, and create crack. And, um, you know, I think that's a, a big thing and just playing within the system. Coach, Deion Dawkins is having an all-pro season. Spencer Brown on the other side is having a Pro Bowl season. But, you know, nobody talk about this guy at all. And, you know, Osiris Torrance just cared about how much of, you know, he's the glue that makes everything sticks. <laughs> yeah, I, I think all five of those guys together, um, you know, it's it's a it's it's a great room that we have, you know, top to bottom. But seeing those guys together, their communication, their chemistry, their understanding of how, um, you know, how each other approaches blocks and just being able to go. And a guy like Saibo that's came in since day one last year, a rookie that, you know, we kind of threw him to the wolves last year in terms of all the D tackles that he was going against. And, um, you know, his first game he's going against the Jets and Quinn Williams. And as a rookie, that's not easy. That's not easy, no matter if you're a vet. And um, he handled and played every snap last year, you know, um, at, a, at a high level. And, um, you know, he's a guy that it's not too big for him, man. He's fun to watch. And uh, I'm glad he's on our team. He's going to be a good football player here for a long, long time. Appreciate your time, Coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Um, I was curious. We've talked, obviously, a lot about Josh's lack of interceptions now this season. Um, I was curious, obviously, a lot of focus on improving his de decision making. What? Like, how do you go about that? Like working with him on improving the decision making, what has that looked like going into the season? And now that you're in this season, like improving in that area, what does the work actually look like? Yeah, I think there's a lot that goes into an interception. Um, you know, I think there's some that's, it's a bad decision. I think there's some that, um, you know, it was maybe unfortunate or they weren't on the same page in terms of a depth of a route or, um, you know, uh, um, a guy made a play. Um, I think sometimes there's instances, so there's a lot that goes into it. That, you know, I think it always just kind of shows up as, Hey, it's an interception, but um, I don't think it's always just about the decision-making. There's sometimes where it's a bad decision that doesn't get intercepted as well. Um, I think it just comes down to, it's nothing where it, it's not like we're, we've coached it any harder. What should I mean in a sense of like, Josh, like you just can't do this. Um, you know, we're still allowing him to be Josh Allen, but he understand, you know, just understanding, um, just how defenses are playing him and, um, you know, trust him where the wideouts are going to be, where they need to be. The tight ends are going to be where they need to be. And he can just trust it if they're not there, you know, progression it and just, hey, kind of take it from there. And I think it's not a it's not a sexy answer or anything like that. But it's um, I think he's not he's not it's not to say he's doing anything differently. He's just playing comfortable and trusting the guys around him. And, um, you know, uh, unfortunately, we had an interception yesterday and we have to find ways to continue to to get back to not doing that and not turn the ball over because that was a big part of the game. But I'm um, uh, proud of where his decision-making is right now. From a comfortability perspective, like as the coordinator to have Josh be, you know, at that comfortable in this offense, how important is that? And like, what does that do for the rest of the offense to have Josh be that comfortable? Yeah, I think, you know, there, there's not a person on this football team in this building, you know, hopefully in the city that, um, doubts 17 when he's at quarterback and, and it doesn't believe that every time we got the we have the football that we're gonna have an opportunity to go down and score and um you know I think when he's playing at a high level um man it's fun it's fun to watch as a uh, fan of football but also calling plays um you can see when he's when he's locked in he's dialed in you can see it um where his, when his decision making his ball placement was where it needs to be it's almost sometimes you can kind of just just kind of point down and, and he'll find a way to make it work and um, you know, uh, you hope to have more of those games uh, than the uh, than the alternative. For sure. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe. How did the offense take a step forward on third down yesterday? Oh, we got the first downs. Um, no, it's like it, it's um, it's nothing, nothing, nothing crazy, nothing different. Um, you know, I think a lot of it was just a you know good job with communication. Um, all being on the same page, um, you know, just doing the simple better. Um, you know, we were able to overcome some of the things that we weren't able to overcome in past games and allowed us to sustain the drives and kind of go with it without doing anything, you know, anything crazy or, or uh, you know, spectacular. Obviously, there were some plays where, you know, the ball had to bounce our way or kick our way on, on certain instances, but uh, – and Josh makes some plays, but um, nothing crazy. But when you go into halftime, six of eight on third down and – you know, prior to the last end of the game, I think you're eight of 13 or eight of 12, something like that. You're going to have a lot of chances to win football games. And uh, I was proud of how our guys 
you know, it was a challenge to, you know, we challenged them going into this week of us being able to sustain drives is a skipping third down. But when you get in the third manageables, being able to have those opportunities, so the guys made the most of it this, uh, this past week. How much do you think that has to do with the fact that you guys were able to get off to a faster start and and really uh, be consistent throughout the game, starting with that first touchdown drive? Yeah, well, I think the only reason we scored on that first touchdown drive was because we converted on third downs. You know, we got the blitz zero on one, then we threw the stick route to, to Dalton. You know, Josh had a you know a scramble in there. It's, you know, an off-schedule throw down, but... And, you know, and then you get the, the touchdown on the third down. But I don't know whether we were three or three or four or four on the first drive. The only way we were able to get points is because we were able to sustain the drives on third down because, you know, we had too many penalties on that drive that backs you up. And, and when you're punting, you're looking back at the penalties. And so, um, you know, fortunate for how we were able to execute on third down against a very good third down defense. Um, but, uh, you know, ideally, we're not making it that hard on ourselves, especially early. Thanks, Joe. Good afternoon, uh, Coach Brady, Pat Freeman from the Buffalo Criterion newspaper. How are you today? How are you doing? I, I wanted to ask you, too, I know you had, had a uh, successful contest yesterday, uh, but as a coach, there's always some things you want to clean up. Uh, can you just tell me, how do you approach the pre-snap penalties that uh, the team suffered? Yeah, I um, right, wrong, or indifferent, I, whether we win or lose has no bearing on um, you know, our approach, um, we can't be results, you know, driven because the same mistakes that show up in the loss sometimes show up in the wins. Right. And that first drive of the game, we had penalties and we're off schedule and we're able to overcome some of those, but in, in past games and, you know, against, you know, other teams moving forward, if that shows up and we can't, we're going to then point to those. And so, um, we approach it the exact same way and we have to clean those up. Um, you know, that, that can't happen regardless of, you know, being on the road environment to get to where we're going to want to get to, we're going to have to win and play in, in, in those type of environments. And so pre-snap penalties, uh, you know, way too many of those yesterday. And so, um, you know, our guys will, it's some, one of those or some of those things are things that I wouldn't even have to say because our guys are going to address themselves and understand uh, that that's not the standard. And, you know, we're beating ourselves when we're doing that. And so, but we can't approach it any differently after a win or a loss. My last question to you, Coach. Yesterday, you had to be smiling about your rushing game, uh, over 164 yards. How big was James Cook's play yesterday? No, it was, he was, you know, uh, did a really good job. And, you know, fortunate we had those holding penalties early, um, you know, that took away some big gains with him and Ray. Um, but really like how the guys, you know, the tight ends, the receivers, O-line came and, you know, kind of opened up the holes and, you know, made some guys miss and, uh, you know, allowed us to play in two-dimensional phase and allow us to, be able to you know, do play action passes and be able to stay on schedule with the run game. And, um, you know, uh, you know, James Ray and, and Ty, the way that they're kind of playing right now allows us to feel comfortable calling anything. And um, really like how James, uh, you know, coming back from injury a couple of weeks ago, uh, you know, really liked how we played. You felt him when he was running the football. Thank you, coach. Thank you. Hey, Joe, it's Jay with the Buffalo News. Thanks for doing this. Um, if you go back a few weeks ago, you, you didn't have Amari, Khalil was dealing with an ankle injury and, and Keon was maybe naturally not as far along in his development as he is today. You know, you, you look at where you were yesterday and where you are today at that position. What do you, what do you make of that kind of evolution or, or even transformation uh, of that group collectively to, to where you are today now? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, we're still, we're still, uh, you know, work to be done, right. We're still progressing, but um, you know, it's uh Anytime you bring someone new in, you're trying to figure that out and trying to figure out your identity and how guys are going to be able to go. But when you bring a vet in like Coop, um, naturally, I think guys, you know, he elevates guys around him just naturally. Right. You know, you got a guy that's played at such a high level for so long. Um, you can see just even releases that Keon's work in, you know, is a, a thing that, you know, Coop does. And so um, it, and it allows you to move guys around, um, you know, with with that. And, you know, you can start. Hey, you know, hey, Coop's in this situation. How are they leaning? How are they going to play that? Is it going to open up for some other things? And then, okay, is Keon going to be in a one-on-one? And Keon understanding and just being able to read the defenses and seeing, hey, a little different when he's by himself and, you know, when he's to the field and those type of things. And, you know, we know Khalil's, you know, he's, he's an absolute baller and, you know, find ways to just move him around. But it, when you get a guy like Coop, it opens up everybody else's, whether he's getting the football or not, um, you know, he he's makes a lot of plays with or without the football. And, um you know, and so just getting that room to continue to, 
a you know getting cooped just to continue to learn the playbook and get more and more comfortable to be able to play more and more um and everybody kind of figuring out their roles in the offense from a week to week but um like where they're progressing like how they're playing together and it's making it a little easier on me trying to get a feel of how to put those guys all all together and then you, you addressed it earlier when you were talking about Torrance, but I just wanted to kind of get your thoughts collectively on, on where you are with your offensive line at the midway point of this season. I know if you've got any wood around you, you'd probably want to knock on it, but you've, you've been able to start the same group, and I know that continuity is big. But just w where do you feel like this line is at uh, right now? Yeah, I mean, I feel I, – I love our offensive line. Um, we're always – I know we have Josh Allen, and we're always going to go as he, as he goes, but – the offensive line is, you know, they, they, they set a tone for us. And um, we had to be able to be the team that we want to be, be able to run the ball, um, to be able to, you know, if, when we have to pass the ball, if we have to pass the ball, to be able to pick up the you know, stunts and the blitzes. You know, that's not easy to do is to have five guys that you feel comfortable both in the run game and the pass game. And, you know, and, and, and I have that. I'm, I am comfortable with those guys, and I feel confident. It's not really a comfort level. It's a confidence level with where those guys are. Um, you know, they're prepared. They know what they're getting into the game. Obviously, the you know, you know they'll they'll hold themselves to a, a higher standard with some of the penalties and the holds and the you know the you know the pre-snap penalties and some of the holdings I can live with, right? Like some of the some of those uh, some of the holds that hey sometimes they get called sometimes they don't but you know, we have to clean up the technique. It's the pre-snap ones that we have to do a better job. Um, you know uh, I know some timing up some snaps and whatnot, but um, you know outside of the the penalties and us being able to stay on schedule, I, mean, I really like where our guys are at. Um, like how they're playing together, um, like how they run around the football and open up the windows in the run game in the past. And, and Josh feels really comfortable with them back there. Um, and you can see that with his footwork with it. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate you, Jeff.